Hey everybody, it's the last Robokai here, and it's time for more Fate Samurai Remnant. In fact, it's time for the chapter finale. We're going in big, we're going in hard, we're going in towards Dorothea Coyette and Assassin's Headquarters, located in the foreign uh, section of Edo. Nice and off in the, f the furthest corner away, so all those stinky barbarians will stay very, very far away and not get their stinky barbarian gunpowder cannons. Uh, and advanced economics all over our uh, our rice and dirt. They're just allergic to gunpowder. Okay, it makes people sneeze. It's fine. It's nothing. It's nothing that racist. It's exactly that racist. It's very racist, but that's all good because uh, joining me as always is cool guy, and he is not racist. I hope. <laughs> uh, if we're always trying not to be, and hopefully continually succeeding. I raised my gun. You're not racist, are you? Anyway, let's get stuck straight in. <laughs> It's time. All the way down Good to Lord. Yosuka. Like I told you, we're in the this is the furthest bottom right corner map in the game. Well. That's gonna be quite a hike. <laughs> Naturally, Saber loves the brickwork. It's all it's all new and strange. Well, you were enjoying yourself, and you should tell Iori to fuck off with that. <laughs> the sparkly guys are always a dead giveaway. Yahari,見ろ、Yori,南蛮戦だぞ。うむ、きらめく水面に雄大な船影がよく生えているな。Seba. <laughs> Got I Iori, no fun Miyamoto over here. Seba. Keep ignoring him. <laughs> Just like, seriously, shut up, you're enjoying yourself. Dad's in high places. It's important to remember, we've uh, we've come here uh, without the uh, benefits of the Tilderic energy. We're, we're going in here as we are. Big fan of that one dude with the flintlock just absolutely not bracing his weapon at all. <laughs> and and in stepping range. <laughs> it gets It's like not even not even remotely going to get a shot off before he gets cut in half by Saber. <laughs> All hands to battle stations. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that makes sense. It doesn't. Yep, we're we're at war Dude, I'm now. I'm a big fan of the music here, though. This is uh, I think Dorothy's theme, and mostly plays whatever she's doing stuff. And obviously, for the area, it being what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, I'm. Pretty big X to doubt that uh, that there, there would be such intricate stonework in a non-bond quarter, but you know, whatever. I, I'm will, I'm willing to go with the fantasy if it means I get to hear more of this music. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with what the non-bond quarters were like back in back in the times. I I doubt the f like you know press X to doubt that foreigners would be allowed to actually build their own buildings to live in. To this to this established degree, there's absolutely no way you would have been you would have been allowed to bring in this much quarried stone and brick and just build what uh, whatever you want here. You know, what uh, like it's uh, it's pretty difficult to get uh, to get quarried stone li uh, like that in in Japan in man in many cases just uh, just because those sort those sorts of quarries require a ton of land which. Japan simply does, uh, doesn't have in in excess. So you started br uh, bringing in like, uh, like perfectly quarried stone blocks. You had better be ready to uh, to give, you know, 
ten of those things to, out of the local authorities to be able to bring in one for yourself. <laughs> yeah. And even that's prob uh, probably a a generous rate of, of like exchange rate there. Mm, yeah, like especially considering you still technically weren't wanted around, and it was just kind of they would put you there if you accidentally sailed in or had very very special dispensation to go visit. Yeah, like if you ha if you had very spe uh, specific goods that the that the some local authority or the shogunate wanted, then yeah, sure, you would be allowed allowed into trade. Like like a lot of the a lot of the conversation about around like Perry visiting Japan is that he opened up trade with Japan. Well, that's not exactly true. There like people were trading ju uh, just fine. It's just uh, just that ev like the scope of the trade was incredibly limited by uh, by the isolationism of the Hokugawa shogun. And Perry forced, you know, like broader, less restricted trade. Manaka. You have activated my trap card. Yes, important reminder, we're not dealing with a mere dabbler. Uh, we're, we're dealing with a full-blown mage off the clock tower. <laughs> she's, uh, she's no fucking slouch, that's for sure. Could you have asked a question that would make Gramps happier? Yes, whereas we had our dinky little run-down house as our as our stronghold, uh, Dorothea, being as good as she is, has everything in here on lockdown. I suppose that also explains to some extent why there's why there's such wonderful construction material here. If she's claimed this entire area as her workshop, then ostensibly she could do some transmutation the, much the, sem, uh, the same way that uh, Iori has in his own rundown little shack. She would just be doing it on a much larger scale because she actually knows what she's doing. Don't tell the Shogun. But yeah, it, it, there, there are some interesting examples of, uh, of what, what mages are capable of doing. I think Fate, uh, Fate Zero has... As one mage turned the entire, like, penthouse suite he's in into, like, a veritable, like, fortress labyrinth. <laughs> uh, which is which is really quite funny because um, cause he's expecting, like, a, like the, a mage duel and, like, the person he's fighting against uh, opens up with a rocket launcher from another building. Seems reasonable, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it's the uh, it's the sort of the big difference in, in attitude between uh, between a, a mage who seeks the root and devotes entirely everything about their being to magic, and a magic user, someone who uses uh, magecraft in order to perform uh, you know various tasks as they need to. And the, the magic users quotation marks are generally looked looked down upon. They would look down on Yori as a magic user, but um. You know, like when you can shoot someone's eyebrows off with a flamethrower. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a little like coating a coating, which is one of the things that pe uh, people frequently equate to magic in the mo uh, the modern age. Ju uh, just because people shit out a whole bunch of code and then wow, the computer do uh, does some crazy uh, some crazy things, right? <laughs> but there there's there's similar there's similar concepts in in coding where uh, where you know like of like it's super easy for a very experienced coder to get stuck in his or her ways and and just can like continually solve problems the, uh, the same way and just some wet-nosed little punk can uh, can show up and just uh, and be like well why don't we just divide everything by two and that makes this entire problem a lot easier and gets around the, uh, this like dumb limitation you're uh, you're complaining about and then then the uh then the experienced coder is like uh, huh that huh that might work <laughs> And then it does work with a, cu a couple of little finagles. Yeah, it's a fool who says, there's no way that's going to work and without ever trying it. <laughs> yeah, just, 
brought in these strange little ma magical reactors as well. There's actually like a, a spirit ley line point here uh, that I forget to absorb this time. The remaining magical furnace. Now what? Oh right, you've pissed off Assassin. <laughs> Yeah, there's, they would be very well aware of us at, by this point. I mean, especially when you start turning off- oh lord. When you start tur uh, turning off their crap. I had a moment of, like, primal fear when I saw- when I saw Tamamo show up. Well, one thing that didn't get shown in that one, and might get shown later, depending on if she's in range or not, but when she does cast her, uh, her, her buff spell, uh, nearby enemies also get charmed, which basically opens them up to free shots, and I don't know of too many enemies that doesn't work on. Like, I've seen it work on, like, servant bosses. <laughs> wow. Like, it's like, it's good for one hit and probably doesn't last that long, but it's good for one hit. A lot of times that, uh, that one, that one hit is what you need to break a barrier, induce, induce a stumble, induce a stagger, whatever. You know, like, it's not just one... See, there you go. God, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, though, that was definitely charm. Yeah. It seems like it actually was last longer than one hit, so it's like basically they're charmed for a certain period of time, you see. I thought well, it was just one I... hit, but uh, but now that I'm watching the video, I'm like, oh, actually, this is different. Might, might, might be one hit against servant bosses. Yeah. And away we go. We've got one. We've got one thing down, but like, I hopefully look at the map at some point. It's been quite a while uh, because this place is sprawling. This is probably the biggest map. <laughs> like, this is like in terms of like all the places we've been and stuff, and in terms of the sheer like volume of content inside of it and the places to go and everything. This is like on par with like uh, a Dynasty Warriors map. In terms of like scale, the complexity of the map, of the map doesn't hurt either. Like they were definitely ta uh, taking hints from, because you there there are still maps that survive some uh, some of the largest ci uh, cities in Europe um, from around this time period. Like uh, like you you can you can go to old libraries and get. Get maps of um, Madrid, of Paris, of London, and so forth. And just with the way there are there are so many little nooks and crannies and and small alleyways drifting off that are sort of present in the in the other Japanese maps, but nowhere near to uh, this to this level. Like I can only imagine that uh, that this map was somebody's baby. Like somebody uh, somebody cared a lot about making this map feel right. It really spices up like the general like places that we fought. It really does make it feel like this is Dorothea's domain. You know, European mage in just like a bunch of like thatched houses or whatever, or like you know modest wooden buildings just wouldn't have quite cut it for like reminding you that you are stepping into somebody else's world now yeah, very much her uh, her world like the this map is writing a huge check for her uh for her <laughs> eventual confrontation and fight which uh you already told me in the intro that is gonna get cashed <laughs> like it's gonna get fucking nutty remember remember um like like, no one's waiting their turn. Holy Grail Wars are massive clusterfucks. Like, we've got we've got like our buddies Jing and uh, and Zhou Yu coming along as well, and God knows who else has probably noticed what we're up to. Red is so adorable when he's happy. <laughs> Yeah, so while Iori works on that, we'll play a saber. Nice, okay. Some more some more unrestricted saber time. I can get behind that. Yep, get the violence out without a time limit. 
Honestly, it give, like I appreciate it if nothing else because it gives me a, gives me a much better opportunity to watch Saber's motions. Like when you when you when you switch o uh, when you switch over under normal circumstances, I'm usually too busy watching the violence. <laughs> Good lord! Yeah, very very much in uh, inspired by uh, by the water element. Holy mother! Everything flows uh, flows wonderfully from strike to strike. Now we have bets. Okay, sure, <laughs> we'll do that. So this ability is kind of interesting because, um, for whatever reason, some of the abilities that Saber has can also hit Iori. It doesn't hurt him, but will, like send him flying. Does it like delay him charging his enemy or his energy? I mean. I don't... Oh, oh, no, no, like, just in general battle, I mean. Oh, okay. We don't hit him right now, which is kind of good. I mean, uh, that that was that was my big thing, was just, uh, just like, can you, like, team kill Iori right now and just break the game? Because that yeah. would be hysterical. Yeah, Iori is essentially untargetable at this at this stage of it. Like, it's, it's, it's like, oh, I'm protecting you, but in, in actuality, he's just not taking part. Uh... Like, it'll do this often with, with characters, you know, they'll sort of be off to the side, just being like, Yeah, that's that's a cool thing that's happening. <laughs> like, and Arya, like, is always le uh, like that. She's over here to, uh, just like, oh, that's happening, and I'm si uh, sitting here... I'm sitting here balancing on my ridiculous fucking shoes. Whatever. We'll be seeing a lot more of Arya just sort of, like, standing around soon enough. Must we? Oh, we must. I thought we were playing Fate Samurai Remnant and not frickin' Dragon Warrior 1, but thou must. <laughs> Don't worry, uh, it'll, it'll all make sense when it happens and what will be happening in this episode. I... I like, I, I don't think I'm gonna care how much it makes sense. <laughs> you're gonna hate it, like, you're definitely gonna hate it. But. Yep, I can already feel me hating it. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, and I can feel me hating it. I can't believe you hate, like, like the Fate franchise's favorite weed cat girl. Like, it's unbelievable <laughs> to me. I see you saying cat girl when she's a fox girl. I don't know why. I just always supply- I guess uh, my brain always just Blah like, blah blah, cats- the cat software, har dog hardware, it's all the same goddamn thing eventually. Yeah, no, it's just like for some reason, it's just when I think of like dumpster animals, I will always think of a cat before I think of a fox. And yes, this place can be visited again later on, and we can unlock stuff to do. Well, there's the uh, the okay, furnace. Okay, well, and apparently we still need to go around. So you are. Yep. Sure. Okay. Yeah, they're throwing everything at us. They've got they've got like you know mage understudies. Stay down. We've got people who've been poison brainwashed by assassin. We've got snakes. We've got bats. We've got all sorts of. I suppose the bats would count as like weird familiar creatures, and there would be ghosts around to sort of channel to get it. So like, Dorothy has definitely got the kitchen sink ready to go. Even the uh, the captains know a little bit of magecraft. It's really weird to me that these captains keep insisting on using a cutlass like a rapier. Like, that's just so wrong. Even when you're, like, locked up with them, they're just still using one hand when they really should be pushing with the both hands because Iori's about to, like, clown on them with the fucking katana. Yeah, but cut- like, I, like I've said in a previous video, cutlasses are not light swords. They are not fencing swords. They, uh, they are slashing and crushing swords. Then again, if you're magically augmented, you probably could wield it any which way you wanted. Sure. I mean, that doesn't make it. In, uh, that doesn't mean the sword is designed any different. All about leverage. Or hang on, hang on, hang on. Leverage. <laughs> Oh, now the tables are turned. Yes, we have to fight without Saber at our back. Which is fine, because we've got uh, Arya to buff us. Yeah. 
I presume that you can also call in Rogue Lancer to uh, to pinch hit if need be. Well, if I if like, because we can only have one one servant with us. Oh, that's at the right. I forgot that. Yeah, and I, I chose Arya. Right, because you need to do that for her diversions at some point. It was mostly just you like to to fully up like get all of her uh, her upgrade tree. You've got to basically cast that Malediction uh, of Sunshine spell a few times. Is it Malediction of Sunshine? <laughs> Something of Sunshine, like... It's it's kind of funny, um, like, the the noble phantasms of, of uh, Tamamo no Mei uh, definitely have Malediction ahead of them, even though they're actually, you know, fairly beneficial spells. They're, they're Maledictions if... You're the one facing the jackass who gets blessed. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Saber with the important questions. I mean, he's a book, he has a spine, clearly. Oof! Well scouted. So that's the problem with all these straight laced Japanese swordsmen. They never come up with that joke. He d he certainly, like, Iori certainly wasn't interested in talking about it. Yeah, he's like, let's not. Like, this is a fucking Can we just hole. not, like... <laughs> the most interesting topic of conversation we've come uh, we've come across in days, and he's just like, can we just not? Oh, he's even, uh, even brainwashed some thugs, too. Might as well. I remember do play like, this, this kind of that kind of reminds me of some of the bull crap you can pull in like Mountain Blade or whatever. Particularly Banner Lord, you can, you you can you can if you're enough of a rogue. Every time you uh, you run into bandits and you tell them prepare to die, they always surrender and offer to join you instead. <laughs> just you just so it's kind of, this is kind of, is kind of similar where assassin just go, uh, goes around. He's enough he's enough of a thug badass that, it, that he's just like that. All of the other thugs are, are just like, you know what? Let's not. An assassin's of like, okay, but I'm still gonna poison you. I, I, was, I was saying he's he's a very atypical assassin. Assassin, like, like I said before, a lot of them require a like you know absolutely rely and require sneak attack as their power, and yet for 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 our assassin here. His capacity for shenanigans is incredible. Also, Life Calls actually sets the ground on fire and does tick damage, which is something I somehow didn't notice when I was playing. Uh, it actually makes it about a thousand times more useful as a spell. Honestly, I, I was just laughing at the ability to just, to just sort of flick a, a gem out there like it was a grenade. Like, that that looks so cool. Yeah, well, typically, typically, like, as I said before, one of the, like, the main heroines of Fate Stay Night uh, is Rin. And she just fucking stores magic. She charges magical energy into gems and just throws them like projectiles. Like, like she has like a few that she's been charging like magical energy into for a long time, uh, and they're just kind of like mega fuck you bombs. <laughs> magical nukes. She uh, she can she can just sort of go, like blow through uh, through her fingers uh, like it's a ring of cigarette smoke or whatever. Well, I think she just launches them. I think they're like, uh, like basically like projects them outwards. I, I don't actually remember uh, if I've read the parts where she uses them, but they're very much a they're very much a last resort thing because I think even she sort of understands there's no way she can kill a servant using it. Look at this crap! She had to yeah she had to had to blow up a master she could or a house I guess. That's that's. That's her answer for the rocket launcher from next door. <laughs> Pretty much. Honestly, I can, I, I can, uh, I can respect any mage that gets incredibly powerful and and get, uh, gets into these in, these weird games and still continues to remember that at the end of the day you can always just blow it the fuck up. Well, that that particular character uh, is. Um... He he has he he has particular significance for Fate Stay Night, although he is not a character in Fate Stay Night because he is deceased by this point. But uh, his entire thing is is that he comes from a pretty weak Magecraft lineage, um, but 
his the magecraft of his family involves pretty much just being able to slow down time. Uh, and he spends a lot of time, which, you know, like, in the pursuit of the root is looked down upon by other mages because it's like, well, whatever, dude. But, um, you know, when you're trying to shoot someone uh, or, or not get killed by their magic and then, like, run up behind them and shoot them in the back of the skull with a gun... Um, is incredibly good, and so he's he's yeah. Not I was a, gonna say like like mage. I don't, I'm he's still more not like a. Cult a I'll just I'll just finish. The, he he's yeah. he's more someone who goes around and and hunts down problems like you know like like ma like sort of rogue mages that are like doing inhuman experimentations or or like you know becoming dead apostles or all, or other really just like horrible stuff, and um, he's actually more or less just hired into the uh, the Holy Grail War. Uh, of, uh, of Fate Zero. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I'm not cultured enough to really understand what this this root is and what the what the great mystery is. The root of all magic could as could for for all I'm concerned, it could be the root of my dick, right? Think, like, think of it like, as the Akashic Records. Care. It's the Akashic Records is the other way it's re referred to. Okay, as. sure, fine. But you know, when you're talking about slow about slowing down time and doing stuff, uh, stuff like I was. Before you finished your thought, I was actually going to directly compare him to Corvo from from our Dishonored <laughs> Le uh, Let's Plays. And, he, and then you were like, hey, that. by the way, he's an assassin for people who are doing bad things. And I'm just like, uh-huh, 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 scans. あの蛇使いの仲間か。蛇使い。蛇使いね。私は小江戸家の長女にして時計塔の魔術師。ドロテアよ。ならばお前が。Boy, speaking of speaking of, of babies, it was definitely some uh, somebody's baby to, uh, to make Dorothea his uh, <laughs> facial expressions be incredibly on point. <laughs> I like Dorothea, but she is she is well directed. Like, of like, there's, there's a, there's a certain, there's a certain je ne sais quoi that com uh, that comes with, uh, with, with art and, and, um, acting that's well directed versus, uh, versus well made, and this is a substantial amount of both. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're currently right in the thick of it. Uh, uh, our enemy has summoned what might as well best be described as um, Orochi Light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, thanks to Neo, we're fairly familiar with people summoning giant uh, multi-headed snake incarnations. But he has been storing snakes for this entire time, so... Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> there was a fight. Do you honestly think Masashi wouldn't just be like, "There's a fight," yeah. and like instantly appear? Uh, that, I, I was, I was going to say, uh, to say, a little like after we were done talking about what we were talking about, that uh, Iori is correct to uh, to hold back simply, uh, simply because there's everybody has an interest in taking Dorothea off the board. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be Dor uh, Dorothea, but anytime there's a play to get uh, get a player off the board, unless you are 
explicitly allied uh, with them, you should get rid of them. Like, this is FFA at the end of the day. Yeah. So, uh, they will have, like, a, a sort of a flashback thing that, like, diversion later, digression, that, uh, that will explain actually how, how Masashi got involved in this. Yeah, that's the, um, that's the sea octopus's uh, attack, uh, spot is your screaming ink. <laughs> the sea fiends. Fucking rude! Yeah. Very rude. But it's fine, we got it. Okay, then. I, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting a sudden whirlpool attack from a snake, but whatever. <laughs> I'm very bad at sort of dodging snakes in general. Ah, uh, there we go. Shingong has showed up. As though the delay wasn't entirely engineered. Kind of, uh, kind of did it to yourself, Dorothea. She, she definitely poked a lot of nests. In many other, sit, like, situations in this sort of genre and setting, I, uh, I would, I would actually be, uh, be willing to chalk it up to, uh, to racism, since, you know, as we've talked about at length, Japan at the, at this point in his, in history was genuinely one, uh, one of the most racist places on the planet, when the planet was outstandingly racist, just yeah. unfathomably racist by, uh, by, by modern standards. But seriously, Dorothea has just been going uh, going around kicking every hornet's nest she possibly can. This is this is all to do uh, to do with her paying the piper, reaping what she sows. She doesn't seem particularly bothered. She still has her giant fuck off snake uh, yeah. god. I mean, the fact that assassin can do that is extremely worrisome as it is. <laughs> Again, like the fact that uh, the fact that like she's a very practiced mage with probably very high class circuits means that assassin is probably capable of a lot of things that I mean, if he was. Iori servant he would not be able to do, I don't think. Like, oh, this shit! It's because she can handle it. She can supply the magic that's necessary to do this. Good lord. I, like, I... I almost... I almost missed it because of what we're talking about, but, like, like just... just the... the flirtation between... Uh, between Musashi and Chenggong as we're... as we're, do uh, we're doing this, and Musashi just... Uh, just... vague... Uh, just... just vaguely, uh... Hinting that she's a cougar. Like, all right, sure, we'll do that. No, she, 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 uh, she has often stated, "Oh, if only they were a bit younger." Uh, and it's always just kind of like, "Stop saying that, Masashi. That's weird." <laughs> <laughs> oh, now what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, such a funny image, just a bunch of snakes being like, okay, we're leaving. Yeah, just, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch you later. It's like, it's just like, you almost hear him just going, where are the snakes? <laughs> I'm the giant snake, that makes all of the rules. Oh, dear. And she's already off to kill them. Of course she's off. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> <sighs> we'll be heading out. Why are you heading out? It's you literally just said this is a decoy. Okay, fine. We'll do that. No, oh, don't worry. Uh, because uh, things are about to get sillier. まさか。何事だ。取られたか。乗れば。Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta admit, he's good. <laughs> not a fucking... Not a wasted moment. Yeah, homeboy hits true. Yeah, that's gonna suck. Not for long, buddy. That's probably a hemotoxin. あと追い この私を知ったするとは驚かされたぞ。イオリ。セイバー。頼んだ。うん。イオリは下がっている。Yeah, ain't ready to back down. This this man ready to fight even though like he's going to be like relaxing for the rest of his. <laughs> yeah, I was like <laughs> he's taking a powder. Great Orochi, the Raging Tempest. Oh, this will be great. This is. This looks fun. This looks fun. Oh, what a great set piece! Yep, fight on the ducks in the Nambon quarter. Uh, wow! Ryder has arrived and taken control of Orochi, which is like. How did Ryder do that? Who is Ryder? Yeah, that Ryder? in and of itself is something that requires a little bit of dissection, but, you know, th like, that is something to be uh, to be done calmly, and uh, there's not really a whole lot of time to do anything calmly right now. That big sort of curling attack can be kind of a bit weird, because it sort of... It sort of uses it at an angle that doesn't really hit that well, but it can absolutely put you It's in a fake-out attack. Like, of like, it's expecting that uh, that you're going to see Orochi prepping for something and then dodge backward. And then if you dodge backward, Orochi has you. It's kind of brilliant in that way, because, uh, because when you compare it to, to something in... You know, Elden Ring or a lot or, or a lot of <laughs> yes. similar slasher games. Distance is safety for the most part, but specifically, distance is is danger at, with with that one. That's an interesting attack. Hmm. So obviously, one of the big things to talk about with regards to Orochi is Orochi is part of like one of the big like like myths of. So much that ties into uh, ties right. into Japanese history. It's uh, we're we're talking about like uh, like the basically the f the mother slash father of most monsters, and and the origin of one of like the greatest blades in Japanese history. <laughs> They did a really good job with Iori's portrait here. Oh yeah, he looks sick as fuck. Yeah, he, he, like... He looks ready to drop. Yakkai Realize they need to stop Ryder, or at least loosen Ryder's control over this thing. Okay, so you could not know the Kabutsu. Musashi is absolutely in the zone. The, fight, a, fight a giant snake, done that before. <laughs> this is by this point, by this point, in the story Musashi is uh, has fought uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of giant snakes, uh, amongst other things. I love her. Like I am, I am totally in the tank for uh, for for Musashi here. She is fantastic. She's having so much fun full time. She's a she's a lovable scamp. <laughs> it's probably. <the> best. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Just casual noble phantasm. The second that meter fills up, I hit it. I hit button. <laughs> Eventually, like, the game will, uh, will just give it, I might not really even tell you it's done it, but it will give a, uh, like a, a, a move that you can use much like the other ones. That, um, that you can just use to, like, charge the Noble Phantasm bar. So if you've got, like, a full stack of it, you can just, like, do a Noble Phantasm. Oh, there it is, Steadfast Heart. If so, so yeah, I can, in fact, actually just do it again and again and again if I want to, like, by just building enough of that. Fantastic. We haven't unlocked that for Saber yet, though, but then again, we also haven't unlocked Saber's Double Phantasm yet, so... Because Iori is rather sensibly still saying, no, you can't do that. I do appreciate that it lets you fight all of these fights. Mm. Like... All yeah. of these fi uh, these fights are done with people who aren't Iori, so they're innately interesting simply because they're something different, and they're against an interesting character. So, like, let let's let's freaking go. Let's have some fun. And the game is like, nah, yeah, I'm with you. Let's have some friggin' fun. And you know, Ryder's back in some new moves now. Uh, Ryder will now lead with shots from the flying pauldrons. Um, oh. And, like, before doing that particular attack, which is also new. So you gotta sort of get used to that. One of the things I really like, though, and we'll see it soon, is that when Ryder will go for, like, a special attack... Also, there's, there's this that sucks you in and blows you up if you get too close. If you say so. <laughs> yeah, going for the big attack. But um, there is there are some sort sort of times when uh, when Ryder will do a big charge up attack, like with the with the red with the red and everything. And um, if you do one of your things that breaks the shield, essentially Ryder will throw the pauldrons in front, and they will tank that attack. And you've got to do another one to actually in interrupt the attack. Ryder's the only oh, one that fantastic. does this. But it is quite, I think it's quite cool. I can't remember if the, the, like, they do it this time, but they definitely do do it in this fight. Yeah, see, they, they teleport there, and as you can see, if we'll use raindrops, it bounces off, and then, and then they you've go- you've got to follow up yet again. Yeah. Obviously, using this particular attack will go through both layers, because it's a multi-hit one. So there's, like, tactics to it. But then again, like, it's, it uses two affinity gauge, so... Oh, there it is! Oh, I thought you had dodged that for sure. God, I, f I felt like I was, like, waiting for a tax return, like, waiting for that fucking attack to come out. <laughs> no joke, right? Like, I'm like, I, <laughs> I know objectively it was only, like, three seconds, but, uh, but, like, of, like, watching it in the moment, I was, I was just, uh, just, like, of, like, count the heart, like, it was the, it was the pause between seconds over here. The moment between heartbeats. Stretching on forever. Alright, well, anyway, Ryder's probably GG at this point. Oh. Now you can go in. Boom! Iori did shit, Sashi. <laughs> well, he hasn't died of poison yet, that takes a bit.
我が剣にて払い清めて死んだよ絶技発揮ドボーン Entire pores just, just like, yeah, well, that's that. Zetsugi no naka no Zetsugi. Masa ni osanai koro ni kaima mita. Kensei no waza. Naraba koso. We have now got access to uh, Sabre's Noble Phantasm. Which, by the way, is not the super fuck off beam that like nearly blew everything up. It's like a <laughs> tamer version of it. We aren't, we aren't quite, we aren't quite there yet. Ano daija o amo tayasuku yaburu ka, nanto susamashii hougu ka. Ah, betai o shingen shimasu. Ah, so shio. Ano saber o aite ni suru no wa hone ga ore sou da. Understatement of the goddamn year. Toki wa Sakashima ni wa susumanai. Sen naki koto. Sore ni, rei wa hito ni hitsuyou na mono da. You're such a nerd. Seriously though. But I can dig that, actually. Sen na kikoto. Sore ni, rei wa hito ni hitsuyou na mono da.今は特戻って策を講じるとしよう。場合によっては土見門と待て探したぞ。世を乱す。足気鬼どもよ。随分と執着されたものだな。地気か。さて、わかりかねます。<laughs> You'll no longer pollute this world, foul ogre. Who are you again? この手合いは相手をするだけのだ。どこまでもどこまでも追いすなってから。ゴタクは不要。その修悪な本性を表すがいい。ライダー。我が一党のもとに切り伏せてくれる。<laughs> I'm just a crow, man. Mate, Lida. They're getting can see what Ryder just did. Someone turning up and calling um someone ogre, which by the way, uh, typically is just Oni. Uh, yeah. Like, like, that's basically the translation. Uh, maybe say Broke Saber's on or something. I wasn't, I, I wasn't listening clearly enough, closely enough, when uh, Rogue Saber was speaking, so I didn't catch what the word in Japanese he used was. I believe he said Aksha Oni. But I might have misheard. <laughs> I'm gonna go half and light out and die. <laughs> yeah, well, he's never been this tired or this internally bleeding. <laughs> I have never been this snaked before. <laughs> yeah, like when I mentioned earlier that it's probably a hemotoxin, I'm basing that on on the fact that you know most snake ven uh, venoms are hemotoxins, which, uh, which cause internal bleeding. They eat away at the uh, at the at the small uh, at the linings of your uh, uh, blood ve uh, vessels and cause internal bleeding. Like he already like literally looks like he's staring into his own mortality right there. I mean. If he if he's been dosed with uh, with with a harder core snake venom, then yeah, yeah, that's gonna be incredibly <laughs> painful. 
It's like, Iori, if you die, I vanish. Like, chill out. <laughs> yeah, Saber's even admitting it. Yeah, the fact he just struggled through all of that, kept his head on, on a swivel, and actually, like, worked on tactics and everything. Like, on strategy, yeah. Uh, Iori went up quite a number of uh, <laughs> a number of tears in Saber's head. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke, Saber. He he is attempting a joke. Give the man some credit. あれが、なぜだろう。なぜだか。今は立ち入ってはいけない。ふと<笑> Explains why Yori has uh, managed to get as far as he has, and also uh, also provides a good indication as to why the hell he uh, he's even involved in the stupid ass Grail War as a nobody to begin with. その仲間に裏切られて無様に焼け死の夢で思い出すだけで腹が立つ裏切られようと yeah, Jonah Ark had a really shitty story, I agree, Chiamon. <laughs> yes, very rapidly telegraphing, uh, you know, the identity of a certain somebody in our proximity. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That said, we will be soon learning Lance's identity, and it's not quite so clear-cut as it might seem. いかな理由があろうとも重ねた罪は消せず手を汚す血は拭えないものそれを分かっていたからこそかの者は運命を受け入れたのでしょうああそうかよ Gotta love Chibot's voice actor. He's actually the, the, uh, the voice actor for, uh, for Yan King in, uh, in Fake Grand Order.要するにお前はセイバーの宝具に置くしてのこのこ退散したわけだ。随分と不甲斐ないありさまをさ。Yes, shut up. うちとる頃合いでないと判断した。ただそれだけのこと。我らは変わらず優勢だ。ことさらに暗示してくれるなよ。チエモンドの。そうか。行くぞ。<笑> <笑> 
次呼びつけるときはもう少しマシな知らせをよこせよ小説どの<笑> I love Chibon so much. <laughs> He doesn't just like, he doesn't just like steal the scene every time he's in it. He like stuffs it in a bag and runs off cackling. The, but like even, even the,、uh, the way he loaded up the honorific Dono with,、uh, with so, with so much disdain and disgust was beautiful. This is the end of the year. <laughs> Can't help but feeling like Yui is, is ju just sort of poking a live wire right now. <laughs> just shoving a, shoving a penny in, into a light socket. その旅路は制服の旅路だった歩みを進める旅にこの両手は王の地に神の地に異教の者たちの地にまみれてゆく<音楽>そんな自分に寄り添ってくれる者がいた手を握ってくれた人がいたんだ So one thing I wanted to say was I have been a little bit untruthful this entire time when I've talked about the extra heroic servants that have been summoned.、Um, for, there, there wasn't just.、Uh, uh, the, like, sorry, probably the better way to put it is ruler is not counted amongst them.、Uh, ruler is summoned when things are not happening the way they're supposed to be happening. And as a result, you don't actually count Gil in amongst them.、Uh, this is the true 15th. Servant. And it is worth noting that in, there are in some cases a servant may manifest without enough power, without enough strength, without enough historical foundation to themselves, that the only way they can actually manifest is through basically resting inside of someone and,、uh, and possessing them.、Uh, this is something that's also been well established in, in, in fate.、Uh, this, is, this has happened before.、Um, so, yes, that was the 15th servant, and they appear to be tied very closely to Saber. Oh ho! They may not even have a class, which is, might be why they simply have to reside within Kaya. Because、uh, it's definitely. They're in Kaya. <laughs> like, they look exactly like Kaya. They're in there when Kaya's in there.、Uh, and it would certainly explain why.、Um, why Kaya just happened to be wandering around outside and watching Saber, like, sword practicing and smiling to herself in the middle of,、uh, in the, middle of the night that time in that other cutscene. But who she is.、Uh, Really does more or less kind of help outline who Saber is, and we're gonna we're gonna eventually learn、uh, what's going on with that, but unfortunately, this is not without consequences. So,、uh, unlike the previous,、uh, previous chapters where we sit down and we have a nice little long piece of dialogue,、uh, we're putting the accelerator on from the very start of the next chapter as Iori、uh, attempts to level himself up、uh, as a swordsman. I hate using that term, but、uh, he is going to, be putting his,、uh, he's going to be putting his foot down in trying to push himself forwards. And we're going to be seeing the consequences of that、uh, over the rest of that episode. And so, I have been the last Robokai. And I have been Core Guy. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this episode. I really like just how much it escalates、uh, in, a, in a wonderful way. 
uh, in a way that's not too similar to the last Escalation chapter ending. But like I said, this next one, it's going to be a lot less stand around talking and a lot more things going absolutely nutty. So I'll see you all next time.